Will you talk about the fact that um, for 30 years you've been studying Neville and that these Nevillites, I call them Nevillites, yeah. they're like, they're, they don't really understand Neville and they're not, they're making it so complicated and so confusing because yeah. it's not Abraham. It's not that simple. It's a little no. bit more complex. And he was a minister. So he does have, it's not so much yeah. Christian. He has a way of speaking that's not today. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I think too, you know, you can read Neville and you can think you understand Neville and you can reread the same book a year or two later and realized you didn't understand at all. And the more I read and reread 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, yeah, I agree more, with you. more of it comes alive and the language is challenging. It is. So, Oh my God. You know, if you like Florence Shin, cause I'm a big Florence Shin yeah. person. So, you know, you were yeah. and, and, you know, um, the game of life. So when you, when you hear it, it could be a little Christian, you might have to take yeah. that out or you, or it's the way they spoke in those days, which was very old school. Today, we're a little bit more brassy. Like Florence has one that's like, I cast thy burden onto the Christ within whatever your problem is. And so yeah. I do use that a lot. Like I cast my burden of X, I cast, my, and then I go, and I'm free to receive X. Like I do do that a lot because that is the mm. one affirmation I took on from her that just yes. know, resonated with me out of all her affirmations yeah. even Elise Hay does a little bit they, they get too yeah. they get too far out there and they put too many words in I think you've got to pull it in and tie yes. it up. there are people right. who love to read the affirmation the paragraphs the, the pages namaste god bless them I'm not one of them I need fast quick, get yeah. me and get me out shit it's more concentrated yes yeah. And also I think it summons you to the feeling place. You know, like people think you have to feel to say it. No, you say it to feel. Because if you yeah. say, I am powerful, I am powerful, I am powerful. And you add now to the, I'm powerful now, I'm powerful now. You're I aming what you want to be. So if you say, mm. I am loved, I am loved, I am loved. Everybody's going to love you. It's just, it's, mm. it, it, it's law. It's when you resist it, it defies yeah. law. If you say, I am yeah. loved, but I don't feel it you're gonna go but 500 times or a thousand times later you say it during the course of the day you're eventually gonna feel it it's act as if you know we always say fake it till you yeah. make it in hollywood it's the same yeah. thing you're faking it till you make it because once you get to the point of like wait a second here i really feel this way and then yeah poof, comes the manifestation you have a bad day you feel like shit and you can't get to the place to go, I am loved. I feel great. I feel wonderful. I feel skinny. I feel sexy. I feel beautiful. Because you're looking in the mirror and taking the story on. And instead of closing your eyes and going inward versus outward, I think going inward is the secret. If you go outward and you look for evidence that you're not beautiful, no one yeah. does love you. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too poor. I'm too whatever. Then you're going to then you're gonna manifest the I am of that experience because you can't. Yeah. Just, Get to where you were before to the place you want to be when you're in a state of lack that's just lack yeah. you know and as they say in australia it's the boomerang oh that's i like that one yeah it is a boomerang totally totally my yeah. god you send back what you send out to you totally that comes back to you look it's not easy i come from a, a really hard place of manifestation because I was adopted. So I started in the womb not being unwanted and I came out with a broken nose, a, a messed up head and two broken legs. Like talk about not wanting to come out to that. And so that utero experience probably has affected me but I've worked really mm -hmm. hard on myself with the inner child work and to say that I'm loved and I'm cared for and the universe always finds a way to heal me, help me, bring me what I need and you know, like the all is well comment that yeah. Esther talks about. Um, all is well, things are gonna work out great. And the, I, you know, I've had bad days where you wake up in the morning and you know it's gonna be shit day and I'm like, fuck this shit. I'll get in the shower, I will go, it's gonna be great. Everything's gonna turn out fine. And I go into a state of denial and eventually by three o'clock things turn around. So it's, if you can do that with love, yeah. manifesting love, you know, my mom always says there's always a lid for every pot and it's always one and done. You only need one. You don't need 50. You just need one person, if not 10 or 20 or 30. My mother and my mom used to say that there's a lid for every pot. So if you keep seeking, what is seeking you is what Rumi says, right? Well, manifest. 
because you're seeking and they're seeking you. You're trying to rendezvous with someone else who's seeking you as you're seeking them. Sooner or later, you'll rendezvous. And it's up to you once you get together how you're going to yeah. let the story unfold. Because, you know, there's a whole other set of problems when you get the person. You know, to get the person is one thing, but to keep yeah. the person is another thing.